In a democracy, agreement is not essential, but participation is. But participation is. Participation is. It's a responsibility that goes back to the founding of our country. A need for every American. Every American. Republican. Republican. Democrat. Democrat. Independent. To inform themselves about America's role. America's role in the world. To keep America competitive. Competitive. And defend our common interests. In a dangerous and often unpredictable world. Join us. Join us. As we discuss today's most critical global issues. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. For great decisions. Prepare. Prepare. Prepare to discuss the world. Great Decisions is produced by the Foreign Policy Association, inspiring Americans to learn more about the world. Great Decisions is produced in association with the University of Delaware. Sponsorship of Great Decisions is provided by PricewaterhouseCoopers LLP, the AARP Office of International Affairs, and the European Commission. Coming up next, should America give up on Haiti? Welcome to Great Decisions, where Americans make tough choices on U.S. foreign policy. I'm Ralph Begleiter. This week we ask, should the U.S. give up on Haiti? To help answer this question, we'll be joined by Great Decisions participants in Dallas and by our experts, Ray Walser, a senior policy analyst at the Heritage Foundation, and Michael Shifter, president of the Inter-American Dialogue. Thanks to both of you for being with us on Great Decisions. Right to the top question, should the United States give up on Haiti? Ray? The question, I think, is posed in a moral sense. Should the U.S. do a particular, make a particular decision regarding Haiti? I don't think that is the way the question should be posed. Will the U.S. give up on Haiti? And I'm afraid that the answer may be that the U.S. over time will tend to give up on Haiti because the problems that it faces there in the reconstruction process, dealing with a impoverished country with low levels of human capital and financial capital, given its tendency to move towards political division, uh, the insecurities there, and the competing interests that we face around the world in a, in a period of physical retrenchment, I think will lead us eventually to more or less give up or to lose patience with Haiti once again and see it fall back into uh, a certain uh, era of neg neglect. But I think there is underneath a certain desire of the American people, a commitment by the Haitian diaspora, and hopefully the Haitian people themselves to come back from this terrible tragedy and, and continue forward. But the U.S. as a government uh, will probably tend to lose interest over time in Haiti. When you say this terrible tragedy, you're referring to the earthquake? The, the earthquake, of recent course. earthquake, of course. But Haiti's been through a lot of tragedies, uh, earthquake the most recent of them. Uh, when, when you think, when you say that the U.S. government will uh, give up essentially on it. Do you mean just sort of say, never mind Haiti, we're not going to come to your aid the next time there's an earthquake or a flood or a storm or something of that sort? I think what you'll see is the sort of episodic involvement that you have seen in the past. We've seen everything from a sort of post a Cold War uh, indifference of the Duvalier period. We've seen engagement with the, uh, the Aristide period in the 1990s. Uh, we've seen sort of the post Aristide, to, post 2004, uh, passage to a sort of a hybrid system of the UN, of the US, of NGOs, of the Haitian government, uh, I think we're seeing a transformation or transition process underway. The United States will, will try to step back, I think, from the actual rebuilding uh, of Haiti, from taking responsibility for what goes on on that island. All right, Michael, same question to you. Should the US give up on Haiti? Well, absolutely not. Uh, I think the U.S. has a historic responsibility in Haiti. Uh, I think the U.S. has a strong interest in Haiti. Uh, it's close to the United States. There are over a million Haitians who live in the United States. It has strategic importance for the United States. And I also think the U.S. has a capacity to be helpful in, in Haiti. Uh, this is a country that's had a tragic history, it had a tragic earthquake, a devastating earthquake. Uh, and I think the commitment has to be strong. It's difficult. It's frustrating. We all know uh, the problems that uh, the U.S. has encountered over time. We know the difficult circumstances in Haiti. It's the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Virtually no institutions, strong institutions. 
Uh, but there's a lot at stake, and I think the United States cannot afford to look the other way, and I think it needs to help be part of an effort to try to uh, rebuild and reconstruct the country. You said historic responsibility. What's the U.S.'s historic responsibility to Haiti? Well, the U.S. Uh, occupied the, the country for, for almost 20 years, in the early part of the 20th century, uh, supported uh, dictatorships, the Duvalier dictatorships, for a long stretch uh, of time. So it has been very, very involved in Haiti. There's always been this kind of concern about Haiti. The former U.S. officials used to talk about this as a nuisance that was close to the U.S. shores. And so I think that uh, there has to be a, a responsibility uh, given that history and a commitment to try to see this country through a very, very difficult period. I was on the American Secretary of State's plane back in 1994 when he delivered a then democratically elected President uh, Jean Bertrand Aristide back to Haiti. Uh, Aristide, of course, has not turned out to, did not turn out to be a good president for Haiti either. Uh, let's turn to some of our uh, Great Decisions participants in Dallas and see what they have to say about this question. I think that there is a spirit in the United States that they want to help Haiti. Some, for many reasons, some altruistic, some not so altruistic. Um, I think it's important for the United States government to step away from Haiti because I think we have enough American problems for the United States government to handle. However, I think it's very important for American businesses and nonprofit groups as well to help Haiti. We can't continue doing things the same way we have in the past. You've both mentioned the numerous U.S. interventions, political, military, economic, and so on, in Haiti. Uh, has what the U.S. has done with Haiti undermined or assisted in better democratic government in Haiti, Ray? Again, the, t the sort of the time frame. The United States really didn't do democracies uh, before very well before the end of the Cold War. So let's let, let's put it in the cold, uh, the context of the post Cold War period. We have democracy coming in, the election of Aristide, the military coup. What does the Clinton administration do? It begin it puts on an embargo. It basically kills off what was the textile industry at the particular time. It has good intentions about supporting democracy but then undercuts the economic base, which you need for democracy. They restore Aristide. Aristide lives out, goes out his term. Preval comes in. Aristide returns. You once again have a polarizing period. You have Washington confused. Do we support Aristide? Do we, we back away? Do we hold off aid and, and, and sort of clip the umbilical to the United States? He leaves in, in 2004 under, obviously, duress. And you move in, as I said, into this sort of hybrid. The United States, I think, by about 2004, 2005, really sees that it cannot take an active and direct role in determining Haiti's future. So you turn to Manusta, uh, you turn to the NGOs, you basically create a sort of hybrid which shares sovereignty with the Haitian government. At least that is the sort of interpretation I have. So in essence, I think after 2005, the United States has sort of relinquished that sort of central role, that interventionist role, which is kind of the, uh, the driving story, at least from the leftist point of view, of what, what makes things happen uh, in our backyard. Michael, have we helped or hurt in our interventions in terms of establishing true democracy in Haiti? I don't think the, uh, the history has been very encouraging or very proud or very happy one. Uh, I think Haiti has been used uh, for the U by the U.S. in terms of p internal partisan politics, domestic politics. We had Republicans who didn't like Aristide, the Democrats who supported Aristide, and so Haiti gets caught in the middle of that. We had Haiti caught in the middle of the Cold War battles uh, as well because we supported a the United States supported a, a, a dictatorship of Duvalier because we were concerned about the spread of communism in the Western Hemisphere. And I think as a result of that, that Haiti has really suffered. And so uh, the, the, there have maybe have good intentions of spreading democracy, but the effect of it, I think, has been to undermine, not to strengthen Democrat, the prospects for democratic governance, which is why I think now we're facing a real opportunity uh, to really do things differently and redeem, in some sense, the role of the United States, which I think, on balance, has not been very positive. In so, Haiti. Michael, would you disagree with an American who might be watching this program and just saying, you know what, let's just let the Haitians handle it and let's stay out of it. What's wrong with that approach? Well, I think the Haitians should take 
uh, control of their situation, but I think they they are not in a position to to do so on their own right now. They need help. Uh, the country has been devastated. It's in terrible shape. Uh, needs support, and the United States has the capacity, has the responsibility, and I think it's in U.S. interest to provide that support. But the United States shouldn't take control of Haiti. The Haitians need to take control, but they need some assistance to get to that to that position. Ray, do they have the capability, the capacity, the political capacity to take control and do it themselves? I don't think at this particular point they do. That's why you've created this sort of interim Haitian recovery commission, uh, reconstruction commission. You've, you've created this, again, going back to the, what I call this hybrid uh, entity, which is sort of part Haitian, part international community, part NGOs, part U.S. government. Uh, I think that it's, yes, the, the standard sort of talking point in Washington for the administration is, yes, we're going to build Haitian democracy. The bottom line is, are they capable of doing it? Do they have the institutional capacity? The institutional capacity was, was heavily hit by the earthquake. Ministries are destroyed and everything like that. Democracy has to have institutions. It has to have security. Otherwise, it's just a word that we use uh, that makes us feel better. Let's talk about the earthquake for just a couple of minutes here. The, the natural disaster revealed construction problems, regulation problems in Haiti uh, that obviously have been going on for a long time. The question is, has the United States really contributed to those poor conditions, making Haiti incapable of withstanding the type of natural disaster that it's uh, subject to from time to time? Let's turn to our Great Decisions viewers in Dallas for some views on that. You know, the government has to become more stable, it has to become more operable, giving the funds to NGOs and to certain elites of the country just hasn't worked. With our constantly changing uh, support and lack thereof, we give these Haitians mixed, mes mixed messages, which um, has definitely hindered their progress. The ideas and the thrust and the motivation has got to come from the Haitian people. But this may be the catalyst. This physical tragedy may be the catalyst that gets people to think outside of themselves, to desire more education, and to work together to form something that's right for Haiti, not necessarily the U.S. Michael, the uh, effects of the quake revealed all these problems in Haiti with construction and standards and government uh, response and so on. Does the quake, in effect, reveal that the U.S. investment in Haiti in the pre-quake period was kind of a waste of money? Well, I think you can't blame uh, what happened in Haiti uh, on the United States, uh, but I think that uh, there were some uh, improvements in Haiti in the pre-quake period that have to be recognized. Security situation improved, uh, investment was going up. So I think that the United States was playing a positive role. It was only modest, marginal progress, but unfortunately the earthquake hit precisely at the time when one could see there was some basis, some grounds uh, for hope. Obviously, the, uh, the problems and the structures in Haiti reflects the level, low level of development in the country. We know that. Uh, but I think you start to see the country begin to come out of that hole. And the United States is playing a role, uh, both in terms of improving the security situation, contributing to the United Nations force uh, in Haiti, as well as beginning to see some uh, investment in the country. So you can't expect miracles in a country like Haiti. It's going to be slow gradual progress, but I think the United States uh, can, can uh, play a constructive role. Ray, is this one of those cases where Americans would say, if we do more in Haiti, we're throwing good money after bad? I'll come to, I'll sort of support Michael on what he said initially. In the period, I'd say roughly from 205 to, to up to the earthquake, this spans the Bush administration into the Obama administration. It does involve Congress. It does involve the international community. Yes, I think that things were being accomplished. I think that there was an opportunity there for, to promote investment. There was an opportunity to sort of uh, bring the private sector in, uh, begin export-led growth and everything. I mean, we've got to look at it ultimately at the, the sources by which Haiti can recover, which is, in essence, its economy. And its economy that was basically flatlined. Uh, and, and again, we've got to look at, in the post period, uh, a way to create out of minimal human capital, minimal financial capital, some track sort of towards the future. But it's ultimately something that the Haitians themselves ultimately have to 
uh, to take upon themselves. Remember Haiti, say roughly about 1960, probably had was sort of was a, a comparatively was not a, a the poorest country in the world. I'd say it was uh, you know it was on par almost with with some of many of the Asian countries which have grown over the last decade. So there's something fundamental there we have to look at and we've got to try to, to resolve, but it's basically the Haitian people are gonna to have to do it. All right, you said the Haitians have to do it. Michael, did you wanna jump in on that? Well, I just wanna say it's remarkable that given the magnitude of the, of the disaster of the earthquake and given the poverty in the country, that there hasn't been more violence and insecurity and looting uh, after that. I mean, I think that demonstrates uh, I think reflects very well on the Haitian people that there is a kind of a determination, a spirit to improve the situation in their country, and it hasn't, uh, it hasn't turned into chaos. And so I think one has, has to bear that in mind. A lot of what has happened in the post-quake period in Haiti has been attributable to non-governmental organizations coming in, not just from the United States, but really from all over the world. Um, is this a problem? Is Haiti a problem that really is not one that the U.S. government should respond to, but that somehow others should begin to step in in a bigger way, Michael? Well, I think everybody has to step in. Uh, I think it's kind of a false debate to say where there are too many non-governmental groups or versus the United States versus the Haitian government. The external support is important. The U.S. has an important role. Uh, because of, of the interest that the United States has, the proximity, the Haitians in the United States, non-governmental groups have to play an important role because the Haitian government is extremely weak and doesn't have a great, great deal of capacity. But in order to get to a point where it has greater capacity to deal and resolve its problems, I think non-governmental groups can play an important role. So you have to figure out a formula uh, for all of these actors uh, to work together. Ray, should the U.S. government step aside and let others take the main responsibility in Haiti? I think we have to play an active role. Clearly, American taxpayer dollars are at work, are involved in Haiti. We have to have accountability. We have to have transparency. We have to combat corruption. Uh, we cannot be clearly indifferent to what we're going to do. And we've pledged to uh, support uh, with several, and I think the current supplemental is about two billion dollars. Uh, that's almost the rest, that's almost equal to what we're spending in the rest of Latin America. How we're going to continue to support the pledges that were made uh, in the pledging conference, somewhere around 10 to 11 billion dollars. Are we going to find the funds for that? How are we then going to employ them effectively? It's kind of, oh, going to be enough to do the job. We're not going to be the determining voice. How are we going to help engineer this process is still a very big challenge before us. All right, let's take a look at what happens after the earthquake recedes into history, and uh, it may be a while before that happens, obviously, to the way Haiti governs itself. Uh, are we at a moment, did the quake in effect clear the slate in such a way that we can look toward Haiti and say there's there a fresh start period, new opportunities for better government, uh, better management of its own affairs and so on? Let's ask our viewers at the Great Decisions Group in Dallas about that. We need to continue to collaborate with not only the uh, local government in terms of what their needs are, assess what those are, the key stakeholders, develop a, an intervention plan, and also network with those who are key members within the local healthcare, education, uh, political systems. The old, you know, give a man a fish or teach a man how to fish. Um, you know, I think, you know, we need to do more of helping them understand what they should be doing and, and developing commerce and, and, and a true economy in the country. I feel we have good ideas as far as what we want to do with the money, as far as placement, education, infrastructure. It's, it's very vital that we stay involved in the games because if we do not, then there are other countries that may step in and let them issue When there's great need, when there's incredible pain and suffering, people are little, they're open, and they're willing to work together. What an opportunity for people to come in and for us to, I don't want to quite say start over, but to build on tradition, on their cultures, etc. After the earthquake, does, does Haiti have a chance for a kind of fresh start in terms of its government and its governance? Uh, in terms of being able to do more for itself and less, become less reliant on the United States, right? Clearly the new government has uh, a major challenges. It has to exert executive leadership. It has to work with a new legislature, a uh, new legislative body. It has to build uh, the core of a new civil service, a new cadre of officials who are dedicated to Haiti, not to their own personal interest, 
who it's going to have to level, bring up the technical level of uh, ministerial personnel. It's going to have to assume from Manusta the security role to build up its police forces, a judicial overhaul. It will have its hands full. But yes, in essence, it does have a, a, a fresh opportunity. Uh, and, and let's just hope that they can realize it. And the U.S. doesn't have any role in that, in, in assisting that, or does it? Uh, the U.S. will continue its role. The question, again, is oftentimes uh, not its desire to assist, but how much it is willing, how much it can afford, uh, and how much will competing interests distract the American uh, people, the Congress, from the needs, clearly pressing needs, that will continue in Haiti with this new government. Michael, uh, what do you think about the future? Well, I think, first of all, geography uh, being so close to Haiti and the fact that uh, over 10 percent of the Haitian populations in the United States are compelling reasons to remain engaged. I think it's a mistake to set unrealistic expectations. Haiti, uh, this is an opportunity after the earthquake. I think everybody's focused on Haiti. The Haitians are more determined than ever to try to turn things around. But it's not going to become uh, a developed country uh, overnight. And so if one sets ex expectations that can't be met, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. I think one should think about modest progress, gradual progress, uh, going back even to the pre-quake conditions which showed some improvement. The security conditions were getting better, governance was getting better, started to be investment. I think there's a real prospect of going back to that and then building on that to continue uh, long-term improvement. But the United States has to play an important role. I think the Haitian population in the United States needs to be used as a resource. The Haitian diaspora has been very successful in the United States. These are very resourceful people. And to mobilize their commitment and the resources also to play a part in Haiti, I think will have to be a, a central ingredient uh, to success. Tell us more about that, the large Haitian diaspora in the United States. What can Haitians in the U.S. do uh, for their own country in the United States? Well, the Haitians have done very, very well in the United States, which shows uh, precisely that the problem is that not that the Haitians are, are not uh, resourceful and hardworking and the like. It shows that the conditions in Haiti are very, very difficult when they come here. Uh, many of them have been successful, small business leaders. They've, they have some resources. I think ways to mobilize those resources, to get them together in order to, to, to invest in their country really needs to be a top priority. Are you saying they ought to go back with their money and help rebuild their country? Or are you suggesting they do something in the U.S., lobby Washington? or whatever? No, I think that, the, I think that to, to help their country, they don't have to go back to their country. Many of them have been in the United States for a long time. They have families. They're settled in the United States. But certainly, they care about their country, uh, their communities, and many of them have family members uh, in, in Haiti. And so I think that that is a potential, uh, I think, uh, uh, strategy that really needs to be taken advantage of. We've seen in the last year in the United States a real strong array of attention to immigration policy, and it's become a hotbed in the last year. Uh, does, does the Haitian situation play into that immigration debate in the United States? Are Americans going to resist doing more with Haiti, or will it perhaps push the U.S. government in the direction of assisting Haiti more so there'd be fewer refugees in the United States? Ray? I think that the Haitian immigration issue is, is more of a localized one, probably in Florida and New York. I mean, I think if you, if you look at the, the big immigration issue, it is clearly the Hispanics. Obviously, Haitians will, will benefit if there are changes, if there are tracks to, uh, to amnesty. Uh, they benefit, obviously, by the temporary protected status, which has been granted after the, uh, after the earthquake. I don't think that they'll be driving the train of the immigration debate, but I think that they will be one of the factors and one of the voices that will come into play when uh, the Obama administration sits down with Congress to, to deal with this issue. Michael, a brief comment, please. I think immigration is always important in Haiti, and I think it should give further impetus to, to try to make Haiti work and to be really committed and engaged there, because if the situation really collapses, then we could face a major, major problem of Haitians coming to the United States. I think you'd say that if, the, if Haiti, if Haiti uh, really deteriorates further, it's going to be a heavier burden in the long run for the United States. A tax, flood of immigrants. Burden, flood of immigrants. Or security situation. There's, we didn't talk about the drug issue, but there's also it's a transit point for, the drug, to the, for, for, for drugs that are coming to the United States and to Europe. Uh, we could have a worse security situation, a worse immigration problem, and in the long run, that's going to be a heavier tax burden for the, for, for, for the Americans. 
Michael Shifter with the Inter-American Dialogue and Ray Walser of the Heritage Foundation. Thank you both for being with us on Great Decisions. Thank you as well for joining us on Great Decisions and special thanks to our group in Dallas. To join a Great Decisions group yourself in your area, visit www.greatdecisions.org. We'll see you next week. I'm Ralph Begleiter. To order a DVD of this series, visit shoppbs.org or call 1-800-PLAY-PBS. Great Decisions is produced by the Foreign Policy Association, inspiring Americans to learn more about the world. Great Decisions is produced in association with the University of Delaware. Sponsorship of Great Decisions is provided by PricewaterhouseCoopers LLP, the AARP Office of International Affairs, and the European Commission. Next time on Great Decisions. Since terrorists attacked the U.S. in 2001, the U.S. has launched two wars, created an enormous Department of Homeland Security, and gone on the offensive against militant Islam worldwide, sometimes compromising its own values in the effort to thwart terrorism. It has also sought to prevent nuclear weapons from falling into the hands of those who seek to harm America and its allies. Ten years after the 9-11 attacks, are Americans safer? Next time on Great Decisions.